Oh. Woo! Back in studio, baby. <laughs> We're here. We're doing it. This is the Wild Times, episode number 76. The greatest show on the air. The Don't say episode numbers. We have no idea what episode this is. It could be 76. It could be 79. It could be a bonus episode. We're recording 100 today. Doing? Well, I'll tell you what he's doing. He's ruining the show already. We just started. It's, it's five seconds in. You know how angry I get when I have to actually be in a physical room with you, Okay, two. so continuing on, I am your host, Forrest Galante, the broologist, the guy who doesn't ruin the show, the guy who makes it fun, tells you factual things like your episode number. Um, joining me, the lovely, the one and only, Patrick DeLuca. What's up, Papa Ooh, a P? slight. Hey. Yep, there's that weird camera thing he does. Okay, <laughs> yeah. very good. And uh, grumpy caveman <laughs> over here on my right, nah. the professor, PhD in podcasting, Mr. Retep. Yeah. What's going on? Why are you so grumpy right Not, now? not grumpy. I- I'll tell you why, though. Okay. Uh, <laughs> not grumpy, but here's why I'm I'm grumpy. hot. I'm sweaty from running around this studio trying to get everything set up again. Mm-hmm. It's and funny because Kyle did everything. <laughs> Who's Kyle? Are you going to mention someone there. without <laughs> even introing them? We'll no, Kyle is Happy here. Happy to be here. Thank you. Fuck off. Forrest, man. What, uh, what's, what's new? I haven't seen you. In, it's been a couple months since we saw each other in person. It's been very long. Yeah. Way too God, long. I know. Um, things are good. I just wrapped up shooting on my Discovery show. I uh, had some free time, spent an extra two weeks in Brazil. We talked about that on yeah, air. Yeah, yeah. Had fun there. Uh, went out to Chicago, Ooh, home nice. of the Reteps. I, I, I'm surprised you're not 10 to 20 pounds heavier now. I am. I'm wearing a very <laughs> slimming T-shirt with a girdle underneath. That's why you're wearing black. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Usually uh, it's the face, though, when you come back from Chicago, because you're just swollen from all the alcohol. From the salt. All it's a, salt. It's a yeah. puffy place. I don't it's know how else place. to put it. It's a real puffy place. Yeah. Yeah. You eat a lot of cheese. You drink a lot mm. of... We love cheese. Brews. I mean, yeah. I do that here, too. It's just out it's there, there's nobody to tell you no. It's true. <laughs> out yeah. here, it's like there's social pressure to not No, it. in fact, it's the opposite there. They're a bunch of enablers. They're like, <laughs> oh, just, ha- just have another slice. And you're like, I don't want more of your cheese meal. Um, <laughs> but no, meal. things are good, man. I'm good. It's nice to be home. It's nice to be in studio. I know. Oh, yeah. This yeah. feels big. good. Yeah, yeah, this is big. So we, Where big. were you last week? We were going to do this, and then... Next thing I knew, you were on a boat and saying you were going to be out of service for a week. <laughs> I, uh, I had two buddies come in, uh, both friends of the pod, Ricardo and Jordan, go. and they landed in Santa Barbara. I scooped them up, and we jumped on the boat, and we're like, let's go out for a day or two and see how we do and chase the tuna around. Oh, right. You, yeah, you had just done the, the test scout, the flight. Right. The very, very dangerous flight. Exactly, yep. With your buddy. Oh, Parker, yeah. How, yeah. How'd the fishing go? Uh, good. I mean, we could have done better ourselves, but we still managed to put two really nice tuna on the boat. Nice. And more than that, we just like, you know, hung out offshore. Weather was beautiful. We drank cases of White Claw. I'm nice. not kidding. It's all we did. Yeah. I've there... never peed so much. I peed like 75 <laughs> times in a day. Sure. I was nice. just like, I'm peeing a lot. Yeah. The um, claw will do that too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure. Yeah, any, they run right through you. Any uh, cuddling? I know Pat's told a story where you guys have like cuddled up you, together. Why don't you, why don't you mind your own business? I, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just curious. I'd it's, like to know the details of the story. It's 2021. Yeah. If I decide to cuddle with a couple male friends, yeah. that is socially acceptable. Absolutely. I just want the brosners to know what's going on with you. That's it. That's and it. we're canceled. Um, <laughs> <We've> <laughs> no, it was good. Canceled. I mean, yes, the quarters are pretty tight on the boat, but we made it work. That's so what, what kind of that. tuna were those? Were those yellowtail or bluefin? Bluefin. Okay. Yeah, so bluefin, actually cool stuff going on with bluefin. So one um, is they just changed the classification. So we've, we've thought that bluefin, specifically the bluefin on the East Coast, Atlantic right. bluefin, have been hammered, right? Like they're running out. There's no more left. They're down right. to 3% of their population. And the Eastern Pacific bluefin, the fish that we get here every year, they're like, oh, their numbers are bad, but not nearly as bad as the Atlantic. Well, a bunch of scientists just came together and just about six weeks ago released a thing going, hey, not only are the bluefin doing better, they're no longer listed as endangered. In fact, okay. we're wow. moving them all the way up to vulnerable, meaning like they've jumped a couple statuses. So anyway, wow. you know, I thought that was good. Yeah, we never really take good. more than one a person or anything like that. We never really have targeted them before. What, but what are the uh, so why, why do they think that is? It's just 
the reason for them coming yeah, what's back? The rebound conservation about? efforts. Wow. You know, people, so they have this thing it's called good. the Eastern Pacific Bluefin Treaty. Right. Which, I remember you talking about yeah, this Yeah, it's all these countries together. It's very corrupt and totally mismanaged. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Regardless, there's enough people that have come together and said, hey, it turns out the fish stocks are actually doing better. So nice. Pretty so, cool. So it's yeah, working. It's good. Even though humans have such a difficult time cooperating and it's fucking a struggle and terrible for everyone involved, at the end of the day... Something happened. And I'll tell you That's something. Good. I'll tell you something, right? People say this to me, and it fucking pisses me off, right? Like, especially in the diving fishing world, when they're like, oh, man, you know, no bullshit abalone are endangered. There's tons of abalone. I see them all the time, right? Well, I'm out there. We're 70-plus miles offshore and jumping in on these foamers, which are where all the tuna are, like, feeding on the surface. Uh -huh. And there's 10,000 tuna swimming around you. The last thing you ever think is like this species is in peril. Right. And it's really hard. Like I, I people do that, and it's irritating when I hear it. But it's so hard to like look at this massive swarm of something and go, these things are running out. Right. Because it's just like it's overwhelming how many you see sometimes. Yeah. Um, What's but, the deal with abalone? Is it completely illegal to eat? No. So uh, so California, New Zealand, and Japan are the three places that have the mollusk abalone. Okay. Okay. Right. Different species. Um, long story made short, California had the biggest and the best, the red abalone. Yeah. Okay. And about, about, and I used to go hunt them every year. I'd go up there. I'd yeah, dive. I remember eating them at your house. Yeah. It's great. Right. Yeah. It's super fun. And, um, you know, it's a snail. Like it's not very exciting. You swim around, pick a snail up off the rock, but they're right. delicious and they're big and anything. Anyway, a bunch of stuff happened, uh, including urchin spikes, kelp forest dying, which abalone eat, a thing called withering fit, foot syndrome, where their foot yeah. that actually sticks onto the rock shriveled up and they couldn't hold on during the big seas. Yikes. And their numbers totally crashed. So to answer your question, you can still eat abalone, but it's all farmed abalone, and the price gotcha. is exorbitant. And the wild abalone, like I used to harvest, uh, is completely closed off. Have you had abalone, Peter? Yeah, I get it uh, over at the Ralph's down on Vaughn's nope. in the deli case. Mm -hmm. Nope. You don't. You mean, nope. no. Have you have you eaten abalone? Have I eaten a bologna? Yeah. Yeah, I have. He's, I don't know if I want to do any more of these podcasts. He's trying to make a joke? I'm, uh, oh, listen, I'm going to get a laugh out of everybody but you two morons. <laughs> <laughs> I th I, so you I know, never have, Forrest was all no, excited no, because he had an abalone. Things. He had a little barbecue at his place. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you were like, oh, like the abalone, the abalone. And I was kind of looking at it and I hadn't eaten any yet. And he, he kept coming. He's like, did you get some of the abalone? <laughs> I thought it was fucking disgusting. Really? <laughs> yeah. And I like, like, I eat a All lot right, of well, sashimi. <laughs> See ya. Yeah. Just it's, me and you. It's like, it's like mucus. Ooh. Do we have it as sushi or did I fry sushi. it? Sushi. Dude, it's so good. Really? You're crazy. So, so compare it to something I might have had. Like, is it comparable to like uni? Which tastes like cat tongue? No, see, I love uni. Uh, so how do you know what cat so, tongue? Tastes I'm just like? saying what I um, envision <laughs> yeah, cat tongue weird. tasting like—a cold, dead cat tongue. Yeah, I'm not a big abalone guy. It, it, no. Have you ever had a calamari steak? Like not the little rings of fried calamari, but like a big piece of white, meaty calamari. I can't say that I have. It's the best seafood. It, well, it is, it is the best. Apparently, seafood. which is weird because he thinks it's the best, and I think abalone is the better version of that. Interesting. Yeah. I was I was at a uh, another Jewish event with my girlfriend yesterday. Apparently, there's a series Lachim. of these. every year. There's Rosh Hashanah, I believe it was called. Sure, yeah. Yom Kippur, actually. Uh, nope. They all wear white. They atone. I, yeah. I, I'm not quite sure, but anyways, they had this thing called white fish salad. Right? You've mm. had tuna salad, okay? Mm. But I've this, had whitefish salad. I mean, any of these salads are not really salads. They just take mayonnaise <laughs> and just mix them with different <laughs> right. kinds of proteins. Served cold. I think that's what makes it a salad. Yeah. But it was like it was it was this smoky fish and mayonnaise, and they all loved it. And I love everything. I'm just you know like a say, fat. Fuck. Actually, that sounds good to me. Yeah, smoked it's, fish. I think great. you got to be really you got to grow up with it. It's very or you gotta, salty. It's super salty. I remember that. And the then there's I just this, it. you blow fucking fish smell out of your nose after you take a bite, and you can't get rid of it. You're just breathing fish smell <laughs> for like an hour. It's herring, too, if I'm not mistaken. Is What's that a white it? fish? I don't know. I think it is herring. I think yeah. it's herring. I think it's pickled herring, and it's got a real pungent. It's super pungent. Yeah. So that's my experience with fine fishes. All right, because I think we should address it. One of the things about the Wild Times podcast is people like an escape. Right, they like to get away from the grimness of the news. That's, that's going why we on. like it too. But a lot of Brosners have sent this. My mom sent it. I know a lot of people sent it to you. It's been in the news. We've talked about the Faroe Islands. We've yep. both been there. Fourteen hundred dolphins 
Uh, pilot whales, same animal. Yeah. <sighs> same animal we saw. So pilot oh, whales are a dolphin species, Copy that. The so largest dolphin. The article I read made me think it was not the pilot whales. 1,400 is massive. Look, when when we were there and I filmed the, the grind, the grind, they killed 84, 86, something like that. Yeah. The, that was... Yeah. It was like 120 the year I was there. Right. So when I saw 80-something, I was like... Oh my God! This is so many life forms like being ended, and yeah. the sea literally turns red with Ugh, blood. Bright, it's awful. awful. It's gnarly. Awful. Um, and that was with eighty. Right. You said 1,200, 1,400? 1,400, I think. I think yeah, fourteen hundred. Right. I literally cannot imagine it. By the way, the population of the Faroe Islands is like thirty. So I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not, that it's small, not big. But, but it's like, also yeah. it's also this fucking you know how. You know, in, in in L.A. or whatever, Halloween's big in West Hollywood. They have a big thing, a festival with floats. This is like their festival. They go out there with the kids. Like, everybody's there. They're showing the fucking kids oh, how to do crazy. this. It's mayhem, 48, dude. 48,000 is the population of the Faroe Islands. Right. So that's, I mean, that's like a whale per two people. It's it's or a no, whale it's like for every, 000. yeah. Well, and then, you know. A whale for every, like, 30 people. That's still wild. Yeah. yeah. So how big are these pilot whales? Uh, they're the largest species of dolphin. I I don't know they're their like, metrics. They're like they're, 10, 12 feet long, Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. 12 feet long, the adults. They're big animal. I mean, it's not like you're picking one up. Right. Um, up to 20 feet long. Damn, yeah, yeah, there they're, you they're go. They're huge. No, they're big. And it's just, it's absolutely barbaric. I mean, I think we've said this before, but this is a thing that has to end. You know, they, they do this under this thin veil of tradition, but there's nothing traditional about it. Yeah. You know, it, it's... A traditional would be going out in a canoe, spending a bunch of hours, working your ass off, you know, splitting right. one whale up from the pod, killing that whale, eating it, feeding the village. Like, that's okay. That's sustainable. Right. But this, I, I've seen it. You've seen it. Like, right. they go in there. They've got these million-dollar yachts. They've got sonar. They've got every piece of technology available to man. They herd this entire family group, 1,400 in this case, into a bay, close off the bay, and just go go hen house syndrome and just start yeah. murdering everything. It's crazy, man. It's not right. It's got to yeah. end. I mean, I, 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 I've said it before, but uh, my friend, I was going to work on Whale Wars back in the day, and he's like, I, we got to watch this thing. Uh, if you're going to work on Whale Wars, you got to watch this documentary with me. And he puts on the cove. And I'm just like, it literally mentally and emotionally Brutal. fucking damaged me Scarred. to the point where I was like, I, it was like two, three weeks before I was back to normal emotionally watching that shit. I'm just like, it's crazy to to think that they don't need to do it for food anymore. Yeah. As far you know, as as, as far as I've read and what no, I know, no, they're very affluent. Dude, the, one of the best sushi bars I've ever been to was in the Faroe Islands. Like, yeah. They're fine. They don't need to be killing whales. It's just such a weird like thing to think that somebody can go and kill these intelligent animals. As like a tradition when it's not necessary, man. Humans are fucked up, honestly. Yep. So it's a mess. Yeah, yeah 1,400 is crazy, though, because, yeah, yeah, like the scene from Extinct or Alive where it was 80 yeah. was was completely insane. It was one of the most insane things you could possibly imagine. Ever. So Ever. times that by 17. Yeah. It's uh, it's crazy. It's I don't even know if you, how you can harvest all that meat. It would take weeks. Week. Uh, it's oh, crazy, God, man. Yeah. It's awful. And yeah, just the amount of blood that I saw and like suffering and uh, uh, yeah. So anyway, so anyway, that's fun. The yeah. thought is that I don't know. I do feel like the whole thing with the grind or the grind sort of isn't like mainstream news. Yeah. I, like truthfully, I hadn't heard of it before we did the the spinoffs, Whale Wars. Mm. Um, but this is really making its way around. I feel yeah. like it's, I don't know, maybe there could be some sort of external pressure because it's, they're being villainized. The Faroese for sure. are. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I feel like they, it's so stunningly beautiful there that like, it's got to hurt the tourism, I would think. You, you, you got to wonder why they don't just sort of let it die. I know they like whale. They've been eating it, you right. know, historically forever. But at what generation, you know, like we like slaves and racism. And then we're like, oh, this is fucked up. Let's not do this. Do right. you know what I sure. mean? Like at yeah. what point do you change does, traditions? Right. Does the yeah. next generation go, hey, this is fucked up. Let's not do this. You know yeah. what I mean? And so it's like, I, I, I don't understand, you know. The kids that are now eating whale in the Faroe Islands right now as we sit here and discuss this because of 1,400 being killed mm -hmm. last week 
are only doing that because their parents have told them it's tradition. Right. They're right. not. They, they wouldn't seek to do it. Like, at what point right. do we just cut the tradition and go, hey, the world doesn't have enough animals to do this anymore. Let's yeah. eat the amazing other things that are already available here right. in Torshavan. Sure. Um, yeah. Got so, anything yeah. cheerier? Yes, cheerio. Many, many things. Cheerio. Uh, many, many things. Uh, the news is great this week, but I thought maybe before we got into news... There's some fun uh, Brosner DMs. What do you got? I got one. Always. I got one right to me from tragedy underscore media. And okay. I thought this was a pretty fun, like, intellectual conversation. I have a strong opinion on it. But so he says, we know invasive species can be traumatic to ecosystems. But what if these species are just looked at as if they are helping with evolution? We know during all the other periods of Earth, there was land bridge formations going on. What if people are just the modern form of those bridges. With time, adaption, and evolution, the native species should even out the playing field as they did centuries before people. This is just a question that comes up in my head during the shower from time to time. Shower um, thoughts. Yeah, nice. shower thoughts from Tragedy Media. I'm so, not qualified to weigh in, so go ahead. No, but, but let's just think about it. He's saying, all right, throughout history, like things have happened, right? Madagascar splits off from Africa. The land bridge forms across nor North America. Yep. New shit moves around, right? A bunch of iguanas get on an, a floating mat of grass and end up in the Galapagos, and all of a sudden those iguanas are diving and, you know, right. things sure. are changing. He's saying, what if human beings are the new modem for spreading and change and sp basically basically species dispersal? Sure. Hmm, so you sure. get that. And I'll give my opinion, but I think it's interesting to hear sort of a non-scientific thought on that. Yeah. Sure. I guess it's just different because one's natural and one's not, right? The land bridge idea or what, what's it called? Rafting. Yeah, rafting. Those are sort of naturally occurring processes where we just speed it up. And are doing it times a thousand. Yeah, I mean, I think, think there's a tendency anytime humans do something that's unnatural or that's not going to naturally happen, you know, everybody kind of says like, well, that's that's not the way it should be. But in this case, like the land bridges, like Pat just said, if it's just speeding it up. But I mean, then what are the consequences of speeding it up? If you're, you know, if you're speeding it well, up. And I'll tell you the fucking consequences. L.A. Yeah. has an invasive mosquito species right now. Mm hmm. They, they were, they're referred to as ankle biter mosquitoes. Okay. They're a particularly aggressive mosquito. Okay. And they just attack the shit out of your ankles because they hang out real low to the ground. That's annoying. They're ruining the city. <laughs> ruining the city. Everyone, this is fucking a very, coming from a place of privilege, no doubt. <laughs> Everyone who has a pool is like, I can't even use my fucking pool. <laughs> and they came over, they believe they they know where they came over two and a half years ago on, for, on a single shipping container. Wow. And the entire city of L.A. is being decimated. I don't even care what it's doing to – I do care what it's doing no, to, like, the natural world. Yeah. But, like, it's just ruining everyone's summer. Right. And there's now two <laughs> summers in a row that have been just trashed <laughs> because of these, these ankle fucking biter mosquitoes. So, okay. That's, Consequences. That's my raging – Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> so you're both right, and I'm glad that you can sort of see that without, you know, needing to sit through a dry scientific symposium. Because that's the thing. It is the speed at which you do this. Because when a couple of iguanas come over and slowly establish and so on and so forth, everything around it, the plants, the birds, the insects, the other animals, they have time to adapt right. to mm -hmm. that. When you come in right. to the fucking Everglades and release, you know, a hurricane hits and you release 14 Burmese pythons into a habitat they're not supposed to be, yeah. nothing can adapt. So right. the alligator walks right up to the Burmese python. The raccoon goes and tickles its chin and gets chowed, and so on and so forth. <laughs> right. So my point is you get this this um, effect where it's everything's chowed. sped up at such a rate that nothing can adapt. So you don't actually get more speciation. What mm. happens when an animal comes over slowly through a land bridge, whatever, everything adapts and you get things to evolve in more speciation. In this case, you take these things, you throw them into the habitat and they just wipe out everything else around them and you have like an sure. Easter Island effect. So, yeah, that's What happened in uh, Easter Island? Easter Island? Yeah, yeah, what happened there? The, Do you the, not know? Or? The, the no, I swear to God. Oh, okay. The people went extinct. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. know it's the place with the big stones and shit, yeah, yeah, but what so, happened there? Yeah, 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 no, that's a good question. Well, I, it, I didn't it know is, if you were setting up for a joke, so no, I didn't need no. to be, I know, to I, be I, negative. Yeah. Well, he's, his first couple jokes were so fucking terrible. <laughs> that was really hard to say. I was like, say. that might be a joke, I, I don't guaranteed know. Guaranteed several laughs from the people watching all the right, podcast. All right, Easter Island is an island in the middle of the Pacific, way off the coast of Chile. Okay, yeah. So a bunch of... Uh, I think Chileans or whatever they were at that point in time got in canoes and landed on this Eden-like island. 
Easter Island. Yeah. It's the middle of fucking nowhere, though, right? It's really way the hell out there. Mm -hmm. Tons of fish, tons of trees, tons of birds, everything you could ever want to eat. Well, as they lived on Easter Island, the people population grew, and they started cutting down the trees to make canoes. The fish started to get overfished, so they had to go further and further out to catch fish. Mm. And basically, one day, they cut down the last tree to make another canoe, Yeah. and there were no more trees. There was no more wood to burn. There was too many people... And the, they couldn't escape because they, they'd somehow landed here and formed this large civilization, but they couldn't get back across the ocean. Mm. So they, the, the term Easter Islanding themselves, their population collapsed. The whole, they wiped out every bird, every fish, every wow. tree, and now there's a barren island with a couple giant stone heads, and nobody, everybody died. Yeah. Well, one of, the other, one of the other thoughts Fucking is that, humans. you know, the Moai, the, the <laughs> giant... Uh, the right. heads, right? The statues that they built. Oh, oh yeah. The They're called Moai? Yeah. Okay, cool. They, it, you know, one of the questions is how do they move them? Right. Mm-hmm. They, these things are massive. They yeah. Tons and tons and tons. So one of the theories is that they use trees as rollers yeah. to roll them. And so they were cutting down their trees really fast too. Right. Uh, not only just to make canoes, but to roll these heads that they were obsessed with. Right. Mm-hmm. And so then eventually there are no trees left on the island. Yeah. yeah. No okay. trees, no shade, else, no water, no food, everything in the yeah, whole I mean, population. It's the it, Easter Island. And they, they talk about this in so many different like symposium stuff. It's a case study for what we're doing to earth, basically. Sure. It's like, let's just take and take and take and take. Yeah. Oh, nothing left. We all die. I mean, you, you take all the trees <laughs> from an environment where you're using the tree, like you have to use the trees daily. I mean, not for shade, for everything. I mean, fire, heat. How could it, like, w- what's going through your head? How Do you know how big the civilization was? No, I don't. So it's like, it, you, you don't notice that this is happening? Plant some well, more they fucking trees. They didn't have the internet. Yeah, so they, they right. couldn't they look couldn't it up on YouTube. It. Nobody could tweet about it. There's one tree left. It's over there, like uh, on the other side of the island. Uh, we're thinking down. about well, cutting it down. When you, when you look at, like, from an archaeological standpoint, pretty much anything that you're trying to accept, right? The, why did they do this? Why w- did someone build Gobekli Tepe? What were these right. people like when, right. you, yeah. when you excavate something? It pretty much always comes down to anything that's really old before we just could go to a grocery store. It's calories in versus calories yep. out. Sure, right? sure. So think about the amount of calories out that were required to basically quarry all of these rocks. Oh, yeah. Build these amazing statues, and there are thousands of them on the island. Oh, yeah. And then move them all around. There's a ton of calories out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? So they had to be ingesting a ton of food, too. For yeah, sure. yeah. So you're quickly going to eat every seabird, everything that's on everything. the island, all the fish. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. It is like a microcosm of what's what's happening now. But I can't. I mean, look. Yes, this was a big group of people. They went extinct. But is that truly worse than me not being able to go out to my pool without getting by? Be, no, no. By I think mosquitoes. the ankle biter situation by, by, trumps by, the uh, Easter uh, Island one. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. I saw Chris Darnell. Oh, nice. Yeah, I saw How's him he this doing? week. He's good. So he was a uh, DP that we. He did two. He did Zanzibar with us. Uh-huh. He was there for that, yep. which was obviously a very memorable extinct Barry, shoot. shoot. And uh, Madagascar. the first Madagascar. Yeah. I love Chris. He's one of my favorite he's people. Great. He's so funny without he, knowing that he's, he's funny. He's a really interesting <laughs> guy. But so he, he's he been, uh, he's been. I don't know if he's going to be happy that I'm saying this, but he's been microdosing psilocybin. Great. Really small amounts, like yep. tiny amounts. That's a big thing at the moment. But he's like, man, he's like, it is a Clarity, huge change. Clarity, focus. Like his mood, mm-hmm. everything. He's really into this. Yeah. So I traded him some of those morels you gave me. He, oh, there you go. He's, he's going to bring, he made these himself too. He, okay. He got some mushrooms. For and, some shrooms? You're getting some magic he's mushrooms? He's giving me 0.1 milligram. It's not enough to do anything. Yeah. yeah he's like, you won't, you won't feel it he, at all, but. Wish you would have had it for, uh. Uh, he hasn't brought him over session. But here's a yeah. theory that he brought up I thought you guys would find interesting, right? Yeah. So like, he's real big into, like, the power of mushrooms and fungus. Oh, and, yeah. And, you know, uh, the my, my cor- was it mycorrhizal networks where the root oh, systems yeah. uh-huh. communicate and all that stuff. And he believes in, like, the power of this, yep. this fungus. Yep. And so he's got this theory now that he's developed that he's like, you know, like, if you're alone and you walk through the forest and sometimes it feels like you're being watched – or something's looking at you. Yeah. He's like, I think it's our consciousness connecting to the mushrooms. Wow. That's he's like, definitely this big brain. This is why I like Chris yeah. now. He's oh, he's, but his, oh, he's Here's his idea. You've got these networks of tree roots that are communicating uh-huh. and helping each yep, other out and doing that. all this cool yeah. shit. And he's like, so there's, there is a consciousness there under the ground. For he's sure like, there I is. I think what you're feeling is your consciousness like connecting with that. You just can't grab it. 
I love it's it. It's a good hypothesis. I love it. There's nothing that we can do to prove it. Do you know what I mean? Science does not exist but not yet. yet. Disprove it. We can't disprove it. We're not Avatar. We can't like plug in, you know, through the ponytail. Okay, but you can, though. You have a degree in biology. Is this true, yes or no? <laughs> no, it's not true, but <laughs> it's on. fucking rad. <laughs> once we, once we figure out quantum mechanics, man, no, we're going to be able to figure cool. that shit I, out. And like, I do have a degree in biology, and I'm not, you know, super ethereal, but I do think, <laughs> isn't that what they all do? Constantly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tarnell does it yeah. daily now. Uh, but I think there's more to it than we understand. And I think the more time that people spend in cities disconnected from it, the more shut off they get to sort of feeling sure. that, that piece of connection, whatever it is, whether, whether you're connected to the mycelium and the mushroom spores or whether you're just right. feeling connected to nature because it's in your, in, your, in your DNA to be in nature. Right. Kyle, what do you think? He's, yep, he agrees with Chris. Mm-hmm. Yep. Kyle says we are conscious with the mushrooms. Yep. And he's high on mushrooms right now. So, yeah. 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 Dude, I took, uh, <laughs> Rogan promotes a product through his brand on it. Oh, yeah. Called Shroom Tech. Did oh, I ever, yeah. did, did I? Ever? I gave you the Shroom oh, Tech. Oh, you gave me the Shroom yeah. Tech. Shit fucking works, it's, man. Dude. Yeah. Shroom Tech. Yeah. We need a uh, new sponsor. Not, not a sponsor at all, but Wish like. Wish they were. Yeah, they marketed it too. as a pre workout. Okay, so what's, uh, what does it do? What does it feel like? Uh, I, w- I wouldn't say you noticeably feel something. Uh-huh. What I would say is that when I had that bottle, I was working out with a trainer like a couple times a week. Yep. I was just noticing a very specific correlation between when I took the shroom tech and when I would have like monstrous workouts. Correct. Versus like That's lazy exactly. workouts where you're like, I moved some weights around. It's and exactly. I'm going to go fucking eat pizza now. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Interesting. Yeah, so, so when I. I think the first time I went on Joe Rogan, he's like, dude, you got to try this stuff. And he gave me a bottle of Shroom Tech. And I, I think he gave me two bottles. I gave one to Patrick. Okay. Or I gave half to Patrick. Yeah, I don't yeah. remember. But I was like, I don't know, man. I'm kind of skeptical to try this. And I remember you were like, yeah, Rogan talks about it. I don't know. And then we both tried it and had the exact same experience where, like, I've taken the C4 and your skin feels like it's crawling. And you yeah, know, you're yeah, like, yeah. I just want to lift something. <laughs> yeah. um, this doesn't do that. You just take it and you're like, I don't feel anything. And then you do an hour and a half workout where you put up like your max of everything you've ever lifted. And you're <laughs> right. like, huh. It's cordyceps, I think, is cordyceps. one of the main ingredients. Is that the one that makes your dick explode when you're like mid lift as hard as you can? No, <laughs> that I think is something you get at 7 Eleven <laughs> called like rhino pussy. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, the cordyceps. Uh, I, I know, uh, I used to work with this girl who drank cordycep tea. Okay. And she was like, dude, this is better than coffee. That's the, they're the little mushrooms that grow only like out of dead caterpillars, right? That sounds right. The cordyceps. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're fucking weird, man. They're like these little mushrooms. Yeah. I think they only grow in like a couple specific reg- regions, I think in Asia, maybe in China. They must but be But they price. grow out of the backs of dead caterpillars. Wow. And apparently they're... Fucking have superpowers. We should start a cordyceps farm. I got plenty of. Have you ever taken mushrooms, Peter? Yeah, of course. Like magic mushrooms. Yeah, I was. Yeah, many did, times. <laughs> did you, Did you have an, a, an experience that you would say was like life altering, yeah. mind blowing? Yeah, I've, I've had I've had terrible experience on them, and I've had uh, many many good ones. One time, I uh, I cleaned the house. Uh, nobody was home. No, no. I'd be, awesome. No, before yes, before I took the shrooms because you can't be in a dirty a dirty house okay. or like a dirty place Smart. or you'll feel terrible. But anyways, I I made a conscious decision that I was going to take the mushrooms in an effort to uh, meditate or whatever, like try and have some kind of transcendent experience with okay. them. I succeeded. I Explain. popped nice. on this weird ass fucking thing. It was like some musical trippy soundscape. So it was like three hours of this music that was just like when you were on, when I was on the shrooms listening to it, I was traversing the universe. It was like a story was being painted in my mind. My eyes were closed the whole time. And I swear to God, I was like out in the universe going around. Like, I think I went to a buddy's house. I don't remember what (laughs) happened. I was like floating around and, uh, and then, you know, I, I just remember I opened and you know, when you're on shrooms, you it feels four hours feels like four days. I mean, time is like very strange. So I literally had my eyes closed doing this thing for yeah, traversing the universe. Yeah. Three, yeah. four hours just did not open my eyes. I remember when I finally opened them and I was like back in reality, I'm just like, holy shit. Like I had 
like it was like I was in a dream. And then I was like, oh, yeah, like I'm in a fucking room. I've been sitting here. The dog's sitting here like the lights on over there. It was so foreign and alien, like everything to come back to reality. Have you so ever tried it for us? It took a lot. Never. Nope. Okay. No. I would I've, never do it now. Not that much. I have, it's too scary. Yeah. <laughs> I have buddies that do the microdosing thing. Sure. Um, like, I have one buddy. He's he's a scientist at the EPA. Like, he's a very yeah. serious person. He just got fired. But, yeah, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying his name on yeah, air. People are Googling. But, uh, Google yeah. But, he, uh, no, he's done the microdosing thing. And he's su- he's so funny because he's such a nerd. He has, like, a journal and he like okay. started by doing really, really little mou- amounts and like went up and up and up over months and then like was like, whoa, now I'm tripping out at work and then right. went back down. <laughs> and like he found, you know, he's got all these charts and he's like, this is the sweet spot. And if I take this much every day, one at breakfast, one at dinner, whatever, I'm making all the sure, stuff, sure. you know, I function at 83% higher capacity. And I'm like, wow, I, I made up all those numbers and stats. But my point yeah. is just he's totally like dialed it in by doing it for a long time. And he's right. like, this is the exact right amount and he's like i won't do it all the time because i think it'll lose its effect but it's like if i if i know i've got something big coming up i'll do it for a month and i'll Mm -hmm. be running at a higher capacity yeah i'm pretty interested in trying it i mean i guess the reason i asked if you'd ever tripped on shrooms was just to illustrate that clearly there's something very powerful going on there right we all take a daily vitamin and it's just accepted that having all the right levels of vitamins helps you function more highly. Right, right. You know, it's pretty it's pretty intriguing, the power of the, the I, fungus. I shouldn't say I've never done it. Okay. I have a story. Okay. <laughs> what do you got? Uh, when I was 20-ish, 21, uh, I packed up a backpack and I traveled all around the world in one long trip. Okay. And uh, when we got to, and I, I, I'm not a drugs guy, I'm not into, just never really been into drugs. Right. Like, it's just mm-hmm. not my thing. Um, high on life, bro. Yeah. Yeah. And, exactly. uh, anyway, get to Viang Vien Laos, which is like, you know, yeah, I didn't go to Viang Vien, oh, but you I know it's like a big party town, big party town, yeah. mostly like crazy Australians. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of like, well, when in Rome, you know, sure. like, first time. And, uh, and so we, the, you like float down this river and there's all these like real ch- like janky wooden structure bars along the river and each yeah. one has worse music than the next one. And, <laughs> you know, they serve like grilled cheese and like family guys on and like a grainy screen in the background. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. yeah. And anyway, we pull up to like the third or fourth one and I'm, I'm getting drinks like I have everywhere else and everybody's doing drugs. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this little Vietnamese guy runs up to me and he's like, you want milkshake? You want milkshake? And I'm like, ah, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah, I want milkshake. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> he's like, uh, you like mushroom milkshake, uh, weed milkshake, opium milkshake? And I'm like, chef's choice. Sure. And, oh, God. Uh, and uh, I was already very drunk at this point. I'm 20 years old. You know, you're an idiot. <laughs> and uh, I'm already yeah. very drunk at this point. And uh, basically all I remember is he brings the milkshake. It's in one of those little, you know, those little buckets you take kids take to the beach. Yeah. The little tiny plastic pail. Yeah. About this big. Yeah. With a big straw hanging out of it. And <laughs> he's like, here you go. Milkshake. Five dollar. Whatever. Right. Yeah. Give him five bucks. He gives me the, the milkshake bucket. Drink the whole milkshake bucket. I'm like, ah, I feel good. Everything's good. And then I wake up 40 hours later uh, on the floor of my hotel room. God. Swear to God. My what, girlfriend dragged mush- me back. It was mushroom milkshake? I don't know. I okay. don't know what it was. I think he put everything <laughs> in there oh or maybe God. it was the booze. I have, to this day, All I have of no it. idea. It <laughs> might have been just a bit of everything. I have yeah. no idea. But I wake up. True story. I'm on the floor, haven't even made it into the bed of my hotel room. A whole day and a half has gone by. Like, this happens at like 4 p.m. in the afternoon. Mm. The rest of that day is gone. The rest <laughs> of the following day is gone, and I'm waking up the next morning. Yeah, you're. Yeah. that's a coma, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. That's how that's were defined. You, were you passed out, or were you functioning, and were told later what you had done? 50-50. I made it through the rest of that day, passed out, <laughs> and then didn't wake up the next day. But I wake up. She thought he was dead. Yeah, of course. I'm on the floor, like cold tile, crummy floor in Vietnam. Oh, uh, God. White tile, I remember. I'm wearing a blue dress, not my girlfriend's. <laughs> um, there are handprints nice. all over my body from people that would, because this is apparently a thing there, spray paint their hands and then print you, and uh, and a coconut shell like that has been fashioned with a belt over my genitals. And that's your only pants. <laughs> that's it. That's all I've got nice. on, and a blue and a blue dress, like a lady's nice sundress. <laughs> Wow. And uh, I go to Jess and I'm like, what happened? And she's like, you were a nightmare. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) God. I couldn't even imagine. Dude, she's a saint for just helping you get back. Correct. Yeah. She could have just been like, okay, you're going over there. 
Yeah, I'm out. Right, yeah. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Your whole life could have been different from that experience. It totally could been. have. And uh, I'm yeah. leaving this guy here. Fuck I woke up pretty this. hungover, and to this day, whether I had mushrooms or not, I have no idea. But <laughs> wow, it, yeah. so you might have. I might well, have. Roasters, let us know if you are into this idea of microdosing psilocybin. <laughs> we none of us have tried it yet. Nope. But I've heard it's good for clarity and focus. That's right. Dude, which I'm interested in. Sounds what else great. you got? Speaking of clarity and focus. At one point in time, we kind of treated this like a news show. Yeah. So, you know. Are we doing uh, some news? Yeah. Well, I think there's a... Uh, I'm going to talk really slow. <laughs> I think there's a... Never ready. <laughs> What's in the news? <laughs> Sir, news from the underground. <sighs> What's in the news? Um, <laughs> wow, there's a lot of good news stories out at the moment. Uh, let's see. My favorite, hands down, Zero Quest is one that's been floating around. I shared it on Facebook. A genomic startup, genomic startup, excuse me. Oh, yeah. Did you see this? Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. Named Colossal gets a $15 million grant to bring back woolly mammoths. We're talking real-life Jurassic Park. Yep. They have said that they actually know what they need to do to genomically, genetically Mm. sequence the right DNA to bring woolly mammoths back. And now that they have this Harvard University genetics professor on board, they have got $15 million in funding to literally make Jurassic Park, to bring woolly mammoths back and have them walking around. This is wild, man. It's a wild. A lo- lot of fucking brosners talking about this in the Discord. There's a lot of uh, controversy on whether this, should they do this? That's the question, man. And, and, and to add to the controversy before we go into like the ethicality of doing it or not, they're doing it with CRISPR, which is already a controversial yeah, yeah. like yeah, gene know. editing. Yeah. yeah, gene editing. So should they do it? All right. Here's my opinion. Yes and no. Okay. <laughs> should we be bringing back Good animals? Answer. Absolutely. The thylacine should be brought back. The passenger pigeon that we wiped out should be brought back. If we have directly caused the extinction of an animal in the last hundred or so years, we should be bringing it back, putting it back into those ecosystems so that it can balance things out. Sure. Sure. Now, there's an argument to be made that we did, you know, lead to the demise of the woolly mammoth, but most scientists believe it was already on its way out. So should we be focusing on woolly mammoths? No. I do not think that we should be taking something that went extinct 10,000 years ago and building it just because we can that ultimately is, well, one, it's never going to be a true woolly mammoth right. because it's not. They, they mm-hmm. have to, you know... It'll be an elephant with a long haircut and some big tusks, basically, because that's how gene editing works, right? It's not a perfect woolly mammoth. Right. Just, they I take didn't know some, that. Yeah. So they, what they do huh. is they take the genes of something that's very, very close to it. Yeah. Say an elephant, and then they manipulate it, right? They go, okay, we know it needs to be ten percent bigger. We know it needs to be seventy percent hairier. Yeah. We know it needs to have bigger tusks. It needs to be adapted for cold. And you get this freak mutant thing <laughs> that looks identical to a woolly mammoth, but in truth is just a deformed, fucked up elephant. <laughs> oh, wait, right. so they're not actually using DNA that was recovered from frozen mammoths? No, they, they will, but they use that. So when you to get, guide them, kind well, of? Well, when you get DNA, so think of DNA as a puzzle. Yeah. Right? yeah. When, you get it, when you get DNA from something, you get this puzzle, but there are these pieces missing, these squares. Mm-hmm. So it's like a puzzle where... 30 of the, the squares have been taken out. Well, sure. you need to fill those squares in with something, right? right? So now they're going to take the elephant genetics and go put it here, put it here, put it here. Okay, great. We have something that basically is a mammoth. Where do we put this embryo? We put it inside of an elephant, blah, 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 blah. Oh, interesting. So that's okay. how you come up with these mammoths that we're going to make. But the thing well, is, we kind of... Mutants. Mutant they're mammoths. They're mutants. They're mutant mammoths. But are we really going to be putting them back in the tundra? I doubt it. Yeah. I mean, you know? that's what they're saying they want to do. Why? I don't know. I don't either. You know? I mean, why I've why not? I've been to the Arctic tundra. It's pretty barren. I mean, yeah? You know, you'd spruce it up with a mammoth or two. <laughs> I mean, well, here's why I would say yes. It'd be pretty cool to see it. It'd be super cool to see it. And, and there, it, the scientist, the lead scientist does say... And I quote, with the reintroduction of woolly mammoth, we believe our work will restore this degraded ecosystem to a richer one, similar to the tundra that existed as recently as 10,000 years ago. So they actually are saying that they're doing it for, you know, the habitat. But a lot of things have changed in 10,000 years. Global warming, there's less snowpack, you know, polar bears are moving further north. Like everything's kind of shifted. And again, and I understand why they're focusing on woolly mammoth, because basically they can. (laughs) 
But why not bring back passenger pigeons? Why not bring back things right. that we need that are now devoid from the ecosystem? If we brought back thylacine, facial tumor disease in Tasmanian devils would likely go away, you know, because mm -hmm. there wouldn't be this overpopulation. Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's like things like that that we actually really need to be back is what we should be focusing $15 million of research on. That said, most people don't care about something small like a passenger pigeon. And if you're asking me if I'm going to pay, Six ninety nine to go see a woolly mammoth or a passenger pigeon. I want to see the woolly mammoth. I mean, <laughs> of course, you know, and I'm and I'm a wildlife nerd, so there is, there's definitely got to be some monetary value to it as well. But I I don't know. I just think that's super interesting news. Yeah, they're saying that the timetable. One of the scientists said six years, and then the guy, the Harvard guy, was like, "That's crazy. It's yeah. not <laughs> happening. Yeah. It's not happening in six years." Yeah, so this is a long, a long project. But here. they have fifteen million bucks. I, that can that should finance sure. it for a while. Yeah, yeah, how long can 15 million bucks keep a lab going? Oh, I would think a while. I mean, I would say, what's a, fuck, I don't know. Well, like what's gene a lab editing, cost? I mean, I feel like that's got to be so tedious. Yeah. So Dude, many you can order hours. CRISPR kits on the dark web and do shit in your garage. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, people are up. people are doing it. What? Have you seen that documentary? There's a yeah. guy trying to make glow-in-the-dark dogs in his trailer park in Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. oh my yeah. God. This is ridiculous, man. Now that that, that Pandora's box is open, <laughs> how much does one of these machines cost? <laughs> it's, a, it's a big thing in like the, at the forefront of like some cancer. There's a bunch of biotechs that are in the gene editing space. Mm -hmm. There's a company called Editas. There's a couple more where they're, you know, they, they have a lot of money. Yeah. They're getting billions and billions of dollars because yep. the thought is that this is just a new frontier. Right. So sure. maybe you can cure certain types of cancer and right. shit like that or prevent them Pretty exciting. using this gene editing software. Yeah. I mean, well, if they can bring back a fucking T-Rex, sure. Let's no. <laughs> we know what happened. We've seen, we've we've seen, seen what movie. happens with that. Yeah. Start with a Komodo dragon, make it a little bigger. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Get some claws. Make it run a little faster. No, exactly. No. Yeah. I, thought, I thought you said that they run very slow, actually. Yeah, I said that, and then people shit all over me. Did uh, they? I, 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 I remember you saying. Yeah. I read an article and parroted this idea that they may have just been scavengers and, yeah. and very slow moving. Right. Um, and then a lot of the Brosners sent other information or like, oh, that guy. As a kook, you know, mm -hmm. it was some scientist in London. Yeah, came up with that theory. Well, it's what just else, not a popular opinion. Yeah, well, speaking though, uh, I got a good a good one here. That is, they are they have brought back to life the thylacine in a way, and you posted it on your Instagram. Oh yeah, yeah. No, this is great. Pat's grabbing his b backpack, but we're gonna have to switch to the <laughs> shared camera angle here, which is number four. Pat, why don't you switch to that? This thylacine footage. Yep. Of this thylacine, somebody colorized this old yep. public uh, archive footage of a thylacine. Yep. And it's like fucking it's spot on. It's beautiful. It's so you're, insane. You're looking at footage of Benjamin, the last known living thylacine. There was actually a female from the Hobart Zoo that was shot in 1936. Wow. And of course, yeah. All film in 1936 looked like that. Yep. It looked at black and white. Mm -hmm. But what happened was this group of French scientists used a process called rotoscoping, an AI algorithm, and apparently 200 hours of hard work to colorize that footage to let us get a look at what a thylacine would have actually looked like. It's and wild, man. I, I, it's pretty much, I mean, it's, it's cool to see, but it is, it's amazing how fucking acute our eyes are because. When you look at something in black and white, it's weird. Like the gradients of gray, you can, you can kind of tell what color totally. stuff is. Totally. Yeah. So it's yeah. exactly how I would have. I guess I've seen probably colored in pictures of thylacine. Right. Right. But uh, but yeah, it is super cool to see. And now there's a Betty Boop. I, I watched it 200 times probably. Yeah. yeah. It's fucking it's awesome. Pretty could, crazy. Could not watch it. I mean. Just like Patrick, I knew exactly what it looked like. I've seen skins. I've seen mounted ones. Like, yeah. I knew what it looked like. Yeah. But yeah. just to see that footage and not be an animation, it, I don't know. I loved it. Yeah, pretty it's cool. Just, uh, really well done. You were saying you were a little hungry, weren't you? Yeah. Uh-oh. Got something. No! Close. Oh, candy corn? <laughs> yeah, baby. I love tis, candy corn. Tis the season. Oh, you weren't here for that conversation. Let's, let's crack that open. Let's do it. Thank so you. We That's did, why he's digging it. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, we did a Patreon podcast, uh, one of the bonus episodes, where we went through our top five Halloween candies. Cover. I said number one, candy corn. I have taken... I'm not eating anything that touches this fucking table. <laughs> um, table. But I think we should do a live taste test. Okay. Open your mouth. Open it's your gonna, mouth. It's going to chip it. Come on, open Try your mouth. it. Do it. Dude, it was right <laughs> on 
<laughs> that was funny. That was never gonna happen. <laughs> cheers, guys. Oh, uh, cheers. cheers. Yeah, cheers. Well, candy the corn single cheers. best Halloween candy. I haven't eaten a candy corn. I saw that oh, in probably good. four years. So good. Oh, it's fucking Chewing good. Chewing a mic. Chewing a mic. <laughs> And it's you, way better than I remember it being. I agree. It's really pretty good. So I said candy corn is is the best Halloween candy for those who aren't patrons because it's a harbinger of the holidays. It's a harbinger it's of joy. good, man. Yeah, by the time you see candy corns in the store, that means the weather's getting crisp. Festivities. Thanksgiving's around the yeah. corner. Next thing you know, Christmas lights are up and everything smells like pine. You're going to... I know you. You're going to have a Christmas tree up before the end of the month. It's been a little chilly out. So um, yeah. On the way here? But these are good. Yeah, these no, are but delicious. what I was going to say is I took a lot of shit. I, bro did. and Roberts, I have five, six people being like, fuck off, mate. Yeah, Candy no, people corns are unsubscribe disgusting. from the podcast because Legit, of Legit, we lost like 15 Patreons. <laughs> They're pretty good. I'm not going to lie. In my head, they were these chalky, like, gross <laughs> candies. Yeah. And they're chalky, okay candies. Yeah, like they're not bad. That bag over. Yeah, they're, they kind of have like a maple syrupy. There flavor is a to maple them. syrup flavor yeah. in there. Of course, open your mouth. Hold on. Oh, that was a terrible gross. throw, bro. Why would you throw it a hundred miles an yeah, hour? Give it, was it? Give it some arc. Well, I got this. Give me some arc. Give me some arc. All right. Oh, it was almost Still there. <laughs> these are fucking delicious. These are great. Are these yeah. the ones that you brought home and Christina said get them out of the house? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> I wasn't there for that podcast, but I saw some of the banter back and forth. Another pick oh, that you made, awesome. Junior Mints? Sued by the candy Did corns. Pat pick Junior Mints? Yeah, that was insane. Fucking Junior Mints, dude? Thin Mints. Fr- junior no, mints. no, I, I went know. Junior Mints. Yeah, people were mad about that. No, Why? That's, that's What's toothpaste? There's so many better so many better candies. They're really good. They're refreshing. And by the way, it is a little bit like toothpaste. If you're ever in a pinch, don't have your toothbrush, pop a couple Junior Mints before bed. Just scrub them? Before yeah. bed? Yeah. <laughs> you're good you, to go. You actually just get really, really sleepy to where you're about to fall asleep. You just put one in your mouth and go sleep before chewing it. <laughs> right. Just let it slowly dissolve. <laughs> no, but speaking of the holidays, on the way here to the studio today, Pat goes, you know, they got the Christmas trees out at Costco already. No. And he goes, thinking about, I was thinking about yeah. getting one. Well, it's, but it's, our, it's other friend, our, Sorry. Sorry. our other friends said, no, you can't do that. It takes away the specialness of putting the tree up closer to the actual holiday. I don't agree. Why the fuck does Costco even have them in September? Did they skip Halloween? I What's going on? Good question. Well, I, I will say this. I think COVID has affected people in a lot of different ways, of course. One of them is like sucked a little bit of the joy out of life. For sure. Yeah. For sure last year, people's Christmas lights were up on November 1st, which Mm -hmm. is not usual. There are some houses in my neighborhood that had them up still in March. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. So I think it's just like, fuck, every day is the same. What could I do? Well, it's only 68. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Let's put up the tree. But okay. the, the, the big issue really is that it, it does take away from the specialness of it. Because otherwise, you just leave the fucking tree up all year round. It doesn't right. take up that much space. It right. brings right. you joy to look at. Part of the reason is the association with everything that is about to come. You, yes. It, and it, in this fucking barren desert that we live in, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's fucking 98 until like... November. I was oh. happy that it got down to like 80 yesterday. I was like, this is beautiful weather. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking it's beautiful. Weather, man. It's yeah. Anyway. weather. It's in the 80s. Candy corns, good call. Uh, it's way better than I remember it. They're Maybe fucking delicious. Maybe, Maybe we'll really get some Junior guys. Mints uh, at a, the gas station. They're a very unique candy. I caught candy. flack for picking Whoppers. And well, I, I can see Kyle there. Oh, yeah. He hasn't taken his eye. He's just been filming the candy corns for the last 30 <laughs> minutes. He really wants some. Let's see if we can get him. Here we go, Kyle. Uh, Oh, oh, that was close. Was that was close. Candy corns all over the studio. Well, at least Kyle bashed his head off the tripod behind him. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, what else is in the news? Let's do one more news one more. item here for. Oh, let's see. What news? else is fun? What else is fun? Oh, um, uh, Peter, let's do the screen share for number two, please. Um, or Patrick. Yeah. This was big. This was flying all around, and I use oh, the term yeah. flying intentionally. Yeah. Because at a University of Miami game, a little I'm kitty scared. cat. Have you seen this, Patrick? Oh, God. Oh, it's no, look at this kitty cat. He's dangling from the yeah. banner. And by the way, not one fucking guy hops the rail and grabs him. If that was me, I guarantee I would have hopped uh, the rail. What's that one, one guy doing? Look Nothing. At, They're just looking at him. But at, wait, wait for it. His, wait for it. Look, look at oh, his paw. He's, he's got one grab paw. He's hooked, oh. on, he's hooked on by one claw right now. Oh! But they catch him and yeah. save his Someone life. Someone caught the cat. Yes, yep. in an American. Crowd yeah. goes wild. Here you go. 
in an American oh, flag. They caught him in an American Dude. flag. I mean, could, that's amazing. Could this you, video. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I'm could sorry. you imagine <laughs> how traumatic the, chaos that ensues. Dude, the entire <laughs> the stadium erupted? Yeah. This Dude. this video the restored way, my faith in humanity. It's fucking great. Uh, the funniest part of that video to me is they they catch the cat in the American flag. Yep. A bunch of drunk University of Miami students are holding up the cat, and right. people are screaming. And then just two normal run-of-the-mill ushers, like, run over, like, give me the cat! Right, like they're going to do something <laughs> like, about it. Like, as if they're an animal rag. They have some control vet. over the cat yeah, situation. Yeah. yeah. Dude, Dude, that's awesome. Can though. you, uh, the, after I rejoiced, in because I, I can't watch shit like this, you know? I'm, I, I'm thinking that this thing is going to fucking die, and normally I can filter that kind of stuff out of my... My my John, I actually posted a thing. There's a website called Does the Dog Die that will Jesus, tell you. Dude, I no, hate no, that. No, okay. no, Does the Dog Die, where it tells you, like, if in a movie or something, without giving you spoilers, there's going to be, like, an oh, animal that dies or something. That's so, hilarious. Yeah. You have to be very triggerable if you're I'm checking very that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm thinking movie. this cat's going to die. So I have run it through my head, like, Oh my God! The trauma of the people that are <laughs> under this cat that they're gonna go through to watch yeah. this thing because they're all looking at it so intensely. I know. And then I didn't know it was gonna get caught, and I was like, Oh my God! Thank God! Well, well I loved it. It's in the news. It's, it's beautiful. It's great. It's so restores my faith in cats. Humanity. There have been documented cases, or at least one, where a cat fell thirty stories from a, either a window or a building and survived. Yeah. yeah. But it's commonly thought that a cat can fall twenty stories and survive. 20? Like yeah. seriously, oh, wow. commonly thought? Yeah, 20 stories. Now, that's not saying they will every sure, time, of obviously. Course. But a 20-story fall, there's a chance a cat's surviving. Wow. Which, unlike us, you know, if, if, if I fall when I'm standing up, I'm probably going to hit my head and die. Cats cats are have got to be some of the most resilient creatures on Earth. I, I met a 19-year-old cat yesterday at this party I was at, and I was, was like... He eating the, the cream fish? He, he would have. Yeah. He's only eating whitefish. Yeah. That's the key that's to his longevity. I'm like, this cat is 19. Yeah. He's spry. He's hopping around. He's <laughs> eating the flowers. He's looking for food on the ground. Uh -huh. He's, like, coming for pets. I'm like... I, that's the equivalent of a human being 150 just like coming around and being like, hey, what's up? Like, I'm still good to go here. And I'm just like a fucking 19 year old cat. They are so like question for you, Forrest. Yeah. In nature, felines, there's so many different kinds, large mm -hmm. cats. Are they I mean, they're fucking that resilient. Like they live a very do they live a very long time and then they. They're very cautious, yeah, too. No, for the most part, yeah. Most most cat species have pretty long lives. They're very clever. They're very cautious. Yeah. You know, some cats, like lions and stuff, rely on... on Sleeping a lot. Well, yeah, they rely <laughs> on that. They rely on the pride, so on and so forth. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's, it's pretty fair. It's assessment. just wild to meet a 19-year-old yeah. cat. I was like, really? This is a thing? Well, he, oh, yeah, yeah. 19 not even that old for a house cat. It's not super old for a house cat. The oldest really? living house cat lived into its 40s. 40s? Yeah. In That's fact, insane. the oldest confirmed birth given by a cat was a 30-year-old house cat who had a litter of two yes. kittens. That's but, wild. But real quick, a couple cat facts here. Yeah, okay? seriously. You're let's, play a little, let's play a little trivia game. Okay. Cat facts Great. fever. In North America, <laughs> are there more domesticated cats or dogs? Not including feral. So these are pets. Let's do more people have dogs. Dogs. Or cats. Dogs. I'm gonna go cats. Dogs, just to dogs are more counter. popular. Cats. cats. Seventy-three million cats, sixty-three million dogs. You know Ten million is, birds I'll dead. Why. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why <laughs> 10 that is. Billion. Because if you if you went per capita, yeah. Yes. Dogs. But because you that have in every trailer park the one old lady with thirty five <laughs> cats in her trailer, <laughs> the true. number the number goes yeah. up. Yeah, I lose. it's okay. true. Dogs make about ten different sounds, audibilizations, if you will. Mm -hmm. My how dog many, does all ten. How many different sounds does a cat make? Twenty three. Uh, three. One hundred. Wow. One wow. around a hundred. That's I'm a lot dot. of sounds. Uh, what is a group of cats called? A pack. So, so essentially, a herd of feral cats that moves together. What are they called? A stinky fur. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, that's not it. <laughs> what? It, it's actually funnier than that. Uh, I don't know. Pass. A, a pride. A, a pride. A clouder. A clouder. Literally wow. spelled yeah. like chowder, but with an L <laughs> instead of an H. 
Um, last one. Last one. No, here. I like this game. Uh, what is it? Okay, good. Couple more. Yeah, nice. do it. you got to learn something. It's These fun. are takeaway I'm facts. learning. I don't know much about. I mean, look, cats. Daniel Cool is going to use this at a bar to pick up a hot chick. Yeah, you know what dude, I mean, that guy, he smashes. He, he doesn't smash this. A group <laughs> of cat. Oh, sorry. What is the technical scientific term for a hairball? A uh, technical scientific. Do you know? Cough wad. <laughs> <laughs> nope. It's not uh, a cough wad. A mucus m- malleable. I don't know. It's a hairball. So it's not a mucus anything. There's it's, mucus in the hair. It's called a bizarre. A bizarre? Like a yeah. bizarre bizarre? B-E-Z-O-A-R. Cool. I'm learning a lot right, right. now. This Last one. Cool. Last yeah. one. Yeah. On average, Use cat, that one at the bar to pick up a chip. spends, on average, 16 hours a day sleeping. Mm-hmm. It means they're awake for about eight hours. Of that eight hours, how like much me. time are they cleaning themselves? Like percentage wise or hours wise? Up to you. We have the, both there. The, well, I mean, I can instantly you do can the do math. Pass math. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, one third of one third of their time, which would still be a lot of their awake time. Yes, yeah, of their awake time. I'm going to say 99%, Pat. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Because I have a cat. You're correct. One third. So around nice. almost three hours a day yeah. of just licking their own genitalia and butthole. Well, my, they, like, they're constantly, mine does, uh, uh, and then like on the face. Yeah, it's the cutest thing a cat it's, does. It's <laughs> adorable. <laughs> they are fucking beasts though, man. My cat is like nine pounds. If you accidentally catch a claw, because she does this thing where she climbs the ladder. Okay. I have a ladder that goes up to a loft. All right. Of course you do. Climbs the ladder, which is a fucking fascinating thing to watch. <laughs> up there, can't come down. Got it. I've tried everything. Now I just block the ladder off. But I thought, if I just leave her up there for half a day, she'll learn. Doesn't matter. It nope. has to I have to block the ladder. Got to do it. But when I go get her, I'm now teetering on top of this sketchy-ass ladder... <laughs> And I have a cat who doesn't want to be held. Yeah, that's, that's clawing. Freaking out. Yep. Yeah. Dude, if you catch the bat claws of a oh, nine pound yeah. cat, you, it's probably an ER visit. <laughs> it's <laughs> terrible. Yeah. And it stings and it itches like a motherfucker for like three days. Yep. Yeah. I can't even imagine. I've always had this idea that I could survive a mountain lion attack. No. Because people can't, you know, have. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm almost, I've almost been killed by a nine pound house cat <laughs> that loves you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, yeah. All right. That's well, it for the cat facts. I think it's time. Uh, for what? Oh. I think I know what time it is. What time is it? Do you know what time it is? God. For what? The battle. <laughs> Woo! Battle Royale. Okay. I'm making Boom. one up. I'm doing it on the spot. Oh, yeah. shit. You ready? This would be great. No Googling. No Googling. Okay, no Googling. This is a Google-proof battle I'm royale. I'm keeping mine open because I have to keep track of who picks what. Okay. But I'm I keeping mine open, and I'll be typing but furious. But no, don't do that. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> but I won't Google, I promise. Right. Okay, so I will. you are remaking uh-huh. the uh-huh. Disney movie Madagascar. Uh-huh. Yep. In the movie Madagascar, <laughs> a hippo, a zebra, a lion, and a giraffe... Escape from Central Park Zoo okay. and they go on a zany adventure. Okay. Sure, that okay. sounds awesome. Right. Never Those seen four it. animals, never seen it? I don't watch movies intended for children, but it's, it's a sure. treat. Um, now, Ratatouille, that's the, something. I can, <laughs> Those four animals are adults. out. Okay. Okay. You're remaking this movie. Okay. What are your three animals? What are their sort of characters or natures? Who's the tough guy? Who's the weeb? And uh, what's their zany adventure? Now, now Madagascar. They used animals that are not indigenous to Madagascar. Correct. So, so they don't all have to be from the same place. Nope. They're, they're, oh. you're, you got three animals. Witness. They're escaping from Central Park Zoo. You're yeah. creating an animated a kids movie about their okay. zany okay. adventure. Pitch it to I me. I like it. Pitch it to each other. Is oh it a snake God. draft? No. Too complicated. You just got to go. Right. You just got to go. Jesus. Yep. No snake draft. Okay. Uh, you going first? I'll go first. Fuck it. I mean, yeah, this is ridiculous. Yeah, since you've already been Googling. I haven't. I just <laughs> He's been Googling tough. most brutish animal. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote tough guy, funny guy. What's the third guy? Whatever you want. Yeah. Whatever you, you want the accountant. To Whatever you, The accountant. <laughs> the sure. straight-laced guy. All right. Set your watches for 25 minutes. He'll be <laughs> and we'll be out of here tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So we need three? Three animals or four? <sighs> three, an- three animals. Will they be battling to the death as That's well? That's up to you. It's your it's movie. It's your Movie, okay. man. <laughs> will they be? I'm asking if they will be battling your animals. No, nope. no, no fighting no, here. It's a movie. It's, it's a good, whoever makes good, a good battle royale. With Two hundred million battle. dollar budget. Box Pixar's office. gonna make. Two hundred million. Okay, so my first animal is going to be my old friend, the 
chimpanzee. I used him in a previous, I believe, movie. Okay, but what's his character and stuff? Come yeah. on. The relax, pitch can't take relax. as long as the movie, man. <laughs> he's the tough guy. He's a tough guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's got an Uzi. He's got a gun. Okay. That's <laughs> Jesus. Jim this is supposed to be a kid's movie, mate. <laughs> oh, is this, it? This is very, like, 1930s. He's got a yeah. squirt gun. Chimp, chimp with an Uzi. <laughs> Kyle's over there Laser packing up his camera. He's mortified he's by leaving. you. He's leaving. So this guy, he's the leader of the group. His, he's a chimp. Okay. His name's Chimpy. Makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah, Chimpy the Chimp. Chimpy the Chimp. Love it. He he leads the funny guy. Funny guy, obviously, they got pigs at a zoo, right? Sure. A pig. They're smart. They're witty. Pigs are very witty. Have you ever seen Charlotte's Web? Yeah, they're they're very smart. Or yeah. Lion good. King. It's good. The pig's name <laughs> is Not going to be Patrick. <laughs> He's smart. He's witty. And also I like a pig. It. I like it. And then we have Low the straight, fruit. straight laced uh, accountant y type guy. Why are you an accountant? Well, what is, what just, is he accounting well, no, for? You got the tough guy with the machine gun, the <laughs> right. funny guy, and then the accountant. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's your dynamic. Yeah. Accountant T. He's, he's straight laced. It's just, you know, I think he's got like a tie and glasses, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and he does math a lot. Maybe his name. So, what's, what's the animal? Okay, though? the animal will be the the straightest laced animal Herpes? in a zoo. No. <laughs> Don't step on my dessert. <laughs> <laughs> it will be the giraffe, my friends. Nope. Uh, nope. Remember, said can't be the animals from the movie Madagascar. Uh, I've never seen the nah, fuck. just bought us another 45 minutes here. <laughs> Sorry, I should have just let it, <laughs> let slide. it slide. Okay. He never wins. <laughs> the fi- won the last one for sure. The final animal in my crew the will accountant? be a very straight-laced Polar mm-hmm. bear. Oh, the he's, accountant. He's right. Been, I get what you're They're good doing. at math. They, they're smart. And uh, his yeah. name will also be Pat. <laughs> okay. Uh, which gives a lot of jokes because then when the chimpanzee's like, hey, Pat, and they're like, what? This is yeah, my movie. True. Shut the fuck up. There'll be no, no jokes like that. <laughs> yeah. I don't like it. Ugh, <laughs> woof. So they will be on a zany adventure and coming across your shitty tribe of animals. They will also decimate them in a battle. Just That's doesn't get it, does he? he he's <laughs> he, the people want no violence. They want a <laughs> there's battle. No, there's no battle. What? Uh, I know it's crazy. Um, okay. You want to go next? You want me to go next? I know my plot. I got to think of my animals. Go okay, ahead. I'll go. Yeah. All right. Um, so uh, let's see. I've got three fun animals. They're all adorable. They're lovable. They have different personas. Uh, leading the group, very unexpected. Porcupine. Okay. Very prickly on the Very outside, but you yeah. find out later on that he's got a heart of gold. You know, he's got kind of a grumpy Smart. demeanor. He's prickly. He's <laughs> off putting. Now you're thinking like a TV movie. Thank guy. you. Well, yeah. he's seen the movie. He's describing the movie. People, he people, might not be saying it. In the film, the animals, people mistake but... him for a cactus and they mistake sure. him, you know, for other spiky objects. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like his shtick. Did that happen in Madagascar? The movie no. As well? Can you just shut up and let me tell my movie? I love it. Like you guys um, did me? Okay. Porcupine with a heart of gold. He's okay. the leader. His name's Pete, not Pat. <laughs> the leader. But but I assume based on what you said that he has a character arc where he's very prickly at first. Correct. And then you realize he's just a little he he does, he's insecure. Yeah. And he's masking his insecurity with his quills, if you will. You've got it. And sure. he, We're talking he's, about Pete you know, the Porcupine. I think we should stop doing the podcast and write this film tonight. Thank you. I, I'm loving it's Pete a the good Porcupine. Start. <laughs> me yeah. too. He's uh, based on me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we got our grumpy porcupine. He's <laughs> sort of our main character. You don't really love him, but you you also have to because he's got a heart of gold. Yep. It all unveils. You got it. It's good stuff. Um, accompany him, accompanying him, this cri- prickly porcupine, is a happy-go-lucky. What, what's the goofiest accent in the world? It's Australian, right? <laughs> so we got it. We got we got a nice Sheila kangaroo. <laughs> Her name's Sheila. Oh, she hops along. She's quite fun. Nice. Um, you know, her, her character arc's quite simple. She's there. She's very motherly. She takes care of everybody. She's overly concerned at everything that's happening. <sighs> the whole time, everything can go wrong. It's always a disaster. Sheila yeah. the kangaroo is there to uh, kind of rein it in. Okay. Be okay. the voice of reason. I like that. I'm very good. making it up as I go. Of course you are. Uh, <laughs> He's pecking away at the computer now. I'm yeah. writing down my own sure, choices sure. so I don't forget. And the final animal that is accompanying our prickly porcupine Pine, our worried and nervous kangaroo, is a bold, a poison, a, a really outspoken tiger. Okay. You know, sort of a Tony the Tiger, if you will. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, everybody loves a big cat. It's nice to have him there. He's pretty. He's good to look at. Mm-hmm. But turns out he's kind of a coward. Got See, it. Here's the here's the shtick. Like, you think he's tough. You think he's big. He's a right. tiger. Yeah. He's kind of a coward, though. He's a nervous Nelly the whole time. Okay. And then Name? what are they doing? Pat? 
I have to explain the movie. Yours is just Fight Patrick, so that's... Yeah. No, I, yeah. I'm yeah. asking what the tiger's name is. I was suggesting Pat. Oh, no, I, mine don't all, I, I haven't come up with all the names Mirror yet. him. Um, I guess I did say Sheila and... What did I say? Pete the Porcupine? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, this this will be, you know, direct spin off of Kel- Kellogg's. Instead of being Tony, it'll, <laughs> it'll be Timmy the Tiger. Uh, <laughs> He's <laughs> gross. He's good enough. Um, and, uh, and they're escaping from Central Park Zoo. They're on the run, and they wind up in the wilds of Montana. It's extremely confusing because mm-hmm. there's snow. They don't know what to they do don't about know it. What to do? Yeah. Yeah. It's a mess. There's bison that they can chat with. Mm-hmm. Yep. There's there's geysers going off, and uh, they they somehow develop a nice life and stay in Montana. Even when they encounter an unruly <laughs> yeah. ragtag bunch yeah. of uh, okay, which they won't be because they're not fighting. That's not how it works. They uh, are fighting. Yep. It's a battle. They're, they're, battle royale. Okay. At, at no yeah. point were they ever. That wasn't fight. real strong. Started strong. Patrick, let's go. Okay. I'm gonna. So here's the plot. First, yep. and then right. the characters. Very good. So we're going to... St- here's the plot of the movie. Three animals in a zoo. Like us. Yeah. Okay. They're mischievous. They get out... They know how to get out of their enclosures at night, and this mm-hmm. is just something they do to get together so they can be friends and hang out. Yep. <laughs> One night, they look into the <laughs> the uh, marine area where they do little otter shows and things mm-hmm. like that, and they look through this crack in the door, and they see that the zookeepers have acquired a mermaid. <laughs> Okay, and they're like treating the mermaid poorly, and then they overhear that they're going to take the mermaid to some other location to do do bad things, experiments on the mermaid. Yep. So the three animals have to team up to go break out of the zoo and rescue this mermaid from having terrible experiments done to her. You should write. You should write for TV. (laughs) (laughs) I'm captivated. So Uh, I've I concede at this point. (laughs) So the first animal I'm going to go with is sort of the brains of the operation. Get this. Not even not even kept at the zoo. Okay. Oh wow. It's a squirrel. I thought they you were gonna say pigeon. No, Very it's good. a squirrel. They can get in and out. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, so he fiddles with even, the locks. He's like the jailbreak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, makes that And because up. he's not kept at the zoo, he knows the streets. Yeah. He knows the outside world. And bring in information. He's such a TV producer. This yeah. is so great. good at this. He knows I wanna how watch to this. Go across wires. Yep. Yeah. Um, we should have made him go first. So <laughs> So the brains of the opera- operation is Chippy. Chippy. Chippy the squirrel. Very nice. Okay. You'd think he'd be a chipmunk, but he hates chipmunks. That's um, about nutty. Now we need some muscle, yep. right? Occasionally we're going to have to bash through a barricade. Makes sense. Now this is going to make it tough to go across the power lines, though. <laughs> we have the oafish, but not a mean fucking bone in his body, hippopotamus. Great. Um, pure brawn, pure oafishness. In my movie, it's going to be the pink in, one from... In Madagascar. Oh fuck a hippos in yeah. Madagascar. I, I had I put Can't the zavash on. Oh, hang on, is there a rhino? Nope. Okay, rhino. Yep, great. Rhino. <laughs> great. Pink, um, still pink. Walter the rhino. Walter. Walter. Not right. pink now. This is just a, a plain ass gray rhino. <laughs> Going to be the muscle. You expect him to be super intimidating, but he's kind of got like a hill <laughs> yeah, type yeah. of thing that going. Adds up. Yeah, right. So that's classic. He's voiced by Kevin from The Office. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. exactly. He's classic, classic <laughs> yeah. Disney stuff. So now we need sort of the. Love interest. Yeah. That that's both important. Chippy and Walter are quite interested in. Makes sense. It's because it's for not good the dynamic. Mermaid. But ultimately, they decide it's better to just put their burning erections away <laughs> and just focus on the job. <laughs> on the at, mission. At, yeah, the right. task at yep. hand. The love interest is the sexiest animal in the animal kingdom. Is a lovely long eyelashed camel. A camel. Ah. Very nice. Very nice. nice. How much plastic surgery has she had? Quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of Botox. Carmel? No, Phoebe. 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 Yeah, because she wants she could have like a squeaky voice. And it's like Phoebe. I don't know. I, yeah, I'm not gonna yeah, yeah. do the voice. Like Fran Drescher is. Uh, Fran Drescher. <laughs> <laughs> so there's my selection. Vote Very for good. me. Thank okay. You. And do they end up uh, saving the mermaid at the of end? Of course they do. Of course. Okay. And then have nobody you ever seen gets a Disney the movie mermaid? where they don't win. So one of them gets the mermaid and one of them gets Phoebe. Then I take it at the Why end. Why are of the you movie. making this sexual? No, like yeah, there's no you sex get in the this girl. Disney I'm not ta- film. I, no, no, I mean there's always a love story. All right, so that that didn't go quite how I imagined it in my head. They're sure. still kind of fun. Weigh in. Let us know whose movie you'd want to watch. Is it Peter's? Is it are they old Patrick? I forget. Chimpanzee, tough guy, the funny pig, or the polar bear accountant that's just on an adventure to fight. <laughs> is it, is it my, my grumpy porcupine with a heart of gold, Sheila the kangaroo, or Timmy the tiger that all go on an adventure to Montana to meet some American animals? Or Patrick's escape plan from the zoo where Chippy the squirrel comes in, causes some havoc, lets everybody out, 
everybody being an oafish rhino and a sexy camel named Phoebe with a high voice yep, that go on a mission Russian. to rescue a mermaid. These are good movies. I want to see well, all one of them. Is. Yeah. I think we should. <laughs> I think we should write them right now. <laughs> I think it's already done. Why don't you pitch that one? We the just one pitched made. it. Everybody, all <laughs> Steven Spielberg watches yeah. the pod. Sonny Tweet this to Steven yeah. Spielberg. Oh, he was already ringing me. Spielberg. Oh. <laughs> You're listening? Yes, all three. Greenlit. <laughs> done. Yeah. Hello, this is Netflix. You've been greenlit. Yeah. Oh my God! You're about to knock over the whole set. It's right. I was trying to, to stay, kind of relax stay. into a position that was good for the outro. For the guys. Closer. I found a candy corn with no white on top. Eat it. Is that like the Dorito that's puffed? No, you got to stick it on your urethra. Good night, everybody. No, not yet. We love you guys. Go to the wildtimespodcast.com forward slash info for all the links. Check out the Patreon, which allows us to be in this wonderful studio. Yeah, we do awesome stuff. Stuff that will get us canceled by YouTube. Not canceled, but taken down. Yeah. Yeah. On the Patreon, four extra podcasts every month. They're yep. a lot of fun, a lot of laughs. Yep. We, we tend to drink more on those. Yeah. Yeah. But, yes. uh, it gets more yucks because we do more drinking. It's a lot of yucking, yucking, yucking it up, man. Yeah, yeah Play baby. Play because I got to make an important phone call. Patreon.com forward slash Wild Times Pod. We love you. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>